All right, I want to cover uh, this example regarding bonds, not to be confused with James Bond, but the type of, uh, top, typically it's a government bond or corporation. It's a way for, let's just use the context of the government, uh, for them to borrow money. Okay, so how it works is uh, an individual would purchase a bond. We give the government money, right? They're borrowing our money. And then what would happen is um, assuming there's a coupon rate, uh, they would pay us what are called annual coupons. And these are just gonna be payments in the form of money uh, annually. Those would be our payments uh, basically for, for them borrowing our money, right? We don't wanna just lend them money for no reason. We want them to pay us something in order to borrow it. So that's where this coupon rate's gonna come into play. Um, and then at the end, um, when the bond matures, okay, we have what's called the redemption value, and that will be um, given back to us, okay? <coughs> now, the price of the bond may be the redemption value, or it may be more than the redemption value, or maybe less than the redemption value, okay? Um, if you want me to cover this in general, I'm happy to do so. I've already gone through this all of these arguments uh, mathematically and um, I'm considering making a video about it but only if people think it's useful um, I go through these things anyway because I need them to make sense to me um, anyways let me explain more in detail with regards to this example um, I have a ten thousand dollar par value and by the way this is the same thing as the face value Um, and this is kind of can be thought of sort of uh, what is the bond worth now today and we have notation for this we call this uh, F so in terms of my symbols F is going to be 10,000 okay uh, then we have 8% annual coupons okay uh, the percentage regarding the coupon rate which we're going to call little r. Um, this is always going to be annual. But um, it, when it says annual here, it could say semi-annual because they quarterly, because they monthly. That's actually when they're paid. So it's a little bit confusing and you need to do some problems to sort of um, convince yourself as to what's going on here and how to think about it properly. But <coughs> um, the coupons always have an annual rate associated with them, the coupon rate but they may be paid not annually. Here they are paid annually, so we don't have to think of anything confusing. Um, so this is the coupon rate, and I'll talk more about what that means in a moment, but this tells me that little r is equal to 0 0.08. Okay, that's our coupon rate. All right, um, this is just notation, okay? Uh, now, um, what's going on here? Uh, in this case, um, they told us that we buy this bond at a premium, okay, and it's going to yield an effective uh, rate of 6%. This is corresponding to basically my interest rate, okay? So I'm gonna use I, okay, so I equals 0 0.06. Now I need to explain the premium situation. Uh, as I mentioned, when you buy a bond, uh, you may buy it for a, a price which is more than the redemption value. I haven't mentioned redemption value yet, but I will. Um, this means it's bought at a premium. You're paying a premium for that bond. You're paying some difference in uh, <coughs> some, some amount of money which exceeds the redemption. That amount of money that exceeds, exceeds the redemption value, that is the premium. So um, I just want to say with regards to the premium, with regards to this premium piece right here, this means that the price uh, exceeds the redemption value. The price is greater than the redemption value. So 
Now, what the hell is the redemption value? Uh, we do have notation for this as well. They say nothing about the redemption value. Something to keep note of. When SOA says nothing about the redemption value, you assume it's the same as the par value. So C, which is the redemption value, is the same as the par value. So um, C, capital C, is also 10,000. Okay, so we have the par value, we have the coupon rate, we have the effective rate, interest rate, and we have the redemption value, okay? This is the redemption value. So, <coughs> and by the way, they may also say that it's bought at a discount. If it's bought at a discount, uh, then in that case, that means you're buying the bond for less than the redemption value. You're getting a discount on it. And that difference, uh, that discount is given by um, the difference of the, pr uh, the redemption value and the price, okay? So these inequality would be switched. Anyway, let me get back to the question. I kind of, I sort of struggle with this because I, I sort of want to explain this in a way that um, you can understand without having any prior knowledge. So that's why I'm sort of going into these details. All right, uh, let me get back to the question here. Um, so we have this information here and I'm after this question. Okay, so let me get rid of this now that you hopefully are a little more familiar with the terminology. Um, uh, this is the question we have, and as you can tell, probably, I'm still battling a cold, I cannot believe it, I've been sick for like over two weeks, so I'm pretty pissed about that. Anyways, before I even answer this question, I want to write down something else to help you really understand what the hell is going on here. Okay, we pay, we pay for this bond at a price, P, this is my price, I'll write it over here. P is the price of bond. And this price is basically determined um, on the amount of the coupons I'm given, which are determined by the coupon rate, <coughs> which is dictated by the coupon rate as well as the face value. Okay, so what happens here is to, to get this to get this bond, uh, say I buy from the government, they pay me these coupons. Okay, the coupons are a percentage of the face value. They're a percentage of the face value. Okay, and they pay me, in this case, annually. Okay, how many payments do they make? Um, I don't think we're even told that. We're not even told that. Okay, so we make N payments, right? And at an effective rate of 6%. That's why I have an annuity, right? Because I'm making N payments, okay? And I'm thinking, I want the present value of that to give me the, uh, the price of the bond. But then also, the government also is going to pay me at the end, when the bond matures, the redemption value, okay, which is C. So plus 10,000, well, C. And then I need to discount that by N years. So this is literally um, the, the most important, probably, equation for uh, the bond section. And if I fill these things in... Hopefully you can see that P is equal to the face value times um, R, which is 800, right? So these are the annual coupons that I'm getting. So every year the government's paying me $800 for them to hold borrow my money, right? And then I have four N years. I have no idea what N is, okay? And at an interest rate of 6% uh, plus <coughs> the redemption value. So also at the end, they're going to give me back $10,000. And ten thousand dollars in this case, by the way, the redemption value um, is going to be less than the price in this case. I gave them, I gave them a price, right, which exceeds the redemption value. We bought this at a discount, or sorry, a premium. Which implies that the price. Well, the premium itself is equal to P minus C. And we know that since it's bought at a premium, P is greater than C. Okay, so now let me answer the question. Uh, find the interest portion of the seventh coupon. All right, all right. Um, let me just write down, there are two, at least two ways I can think of to do this. Okay, 
um, the seventh coupon. So in other words, I mean, how long? How many times are um, coupons paid annually? So in other words, uh, what's the interest portion associated uh, with the payment of eight hundred in the seventh year? Uh, well, seventh period. Actually, it should be years. Right? N is in years because um, it's annually. So N is in years. N in years. All right, all right. So the notation here um, is I. Um, I'm just gonna write seven. So that's what we're concerned with. Uh, I'm sort of. <laughs> I almost want to write this in general, but um, maybe I'll say that for a different video if people are interested. So, the interest paid, the interest portion of the seventh coupon. How can you get that? Well, if you think about it, um, <coughs> one way to get this is to just take uh, the interest. What is my interest? My interest is 6%. I'll call it I times the balance in the previous year. The balance in the previous year. This is what I believe, well yeah, this is what SOA does. So this is how, this is how SOA solves the problem. I wanna do it a different way. Um, the only reason, really, well, two reasons. One, just to be, to do something different, because I don't wanna just, you know, regurgitate what they did. And number two, the second way is the way that I actually did it the first time. And I actually did get it right the first time. So uh, the interest portion and the seventh payment, another way to think about this, let me write it this way actually, um, for any coupon payment, okay, we'll, we'll say uh, 800, right? Or I'm gonna say FR, okay? So for a coupon payment, um, what does it consist of? It consists of an interest portion as well as a principal portion. So I'm paying some of, or the government's paying part of the actual um, premium, right? And the, which is amortization of the premiums, what they call this, usually it's just the principal, it's just the principal paid, okay? And they're also paying uh, partly interest, okay? So hopefully you can agree that the interest in the seventh payment uh, plus, I'm gonna put, and actually this is notation P7, this, in this case, because it's at a premium, this is called amortizing the premium. The amount amortized of the premium in the seventh uh, coupon. This is the interest portion. These must add up to, if you think about it, whatever the coupon value is, right? Because the coupon value is composed of two things, interest, principal. So this is FR, uh, little r. So this is um, what I'm going to use. So, um, how I will solve the problem. So, um, we're interested in I sub 7, okay? <coughs> and I need to compute this then, right? So, let me give myself some more room. Um, now, there is another formula we need, and again, I'm happy to go through where this came from. Okay, I sort of struggle with this because I hate writing things down. I don't like just writing random formulas down without anyone having any idea where the hell they came from. It's just kind of annoying. I just don't like that sort of situation. So, but I have to do it here. Uh, again, if you want me to make a video about where these formulas come from, I'm happy to do that. Okay, so using this, okay, we're after, um, we want to know this, right? I want to solve for this. This is what I want to find. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just do some simple algebra. <laughs> Subtract P sub seven. I have FR, right? Because I have F and I have R. So therefore, so hence, um, what is I seven? I seven is equal to FR minus, let me write it, FR minus P seven. So this is equal to FR is the face value times the coupon rate, which is 800 minus, this is where I need to use a formula, which you're gonna say, where the hell does this come from? <coughs> now, this formula is written a specific way geared towards the fact that we're paying uh, at a premium, okay? 
if we pay uh, at a premium, at a premium here, then this is going to mean actually that FR minus CI is going to be a positive value. And if you think about it, it is. I mean, just look at my numbers here. This is absolutely positive. And then times V2, the N minus T plus one. Now, uh, now what? Well, um, I want you to think about a couple of things. First of all, if you watch my video on the formulas regarding amortization, this is exactly the factor that was there regarding the principle. This is just like principle. Um, this piece, I'm not going to say too much about it. Maybe I'll just write the formula uh, down. Well, no, I'm not going to say anything. I'm just going to leave it here. Uh, because so 7 is T. Let me replace that. So this is my formula. This is 7. Okay, and now I want to just fill in the rest. So this is equal to uh, 800 minus uh, FR we have is 800 minus CI. Uh, what are we doing here? This is 10,000 minus 0 0.06. So minus 600. So that is a positive value. V to the N, uh, this is minus 6. <coughs> All right, that looks good. So once I find out what N is, I'm good to go. And actually, so they actually told me from the get-go uh, that N equals 10. So we're good. We're good to go because now let's just simplify this. This is 800 minus, okay, 200 V to the 10 minus 6, right? So this is 4. <coughs> Quite easy to evaluate this on the calculator. In fact, well, I have both of them. I have both of them, but I'm only going to use this one. Okay, I'll definitely use, I actually have two of the TI 30 XS multi views. I have two of these. I'm going to bring both these to the test, and I'm going to bring this thing. This thing is, uh, I'm going to do another example soon. I'll show you why this is super valuable. I'm only going to use this one actually now. So um, the way I do this um, is I'm just going to uh, save this. I'm actually going to. Um, store this. Actually, I'm just going to write it out because there's only one of them. So this is 800 minus 200 times uh, one point. Remember, V here is associated with the interest rate, so uh, 06 raised to the negative 4. So this gives me this gives me 641 uh, point five. Eight, and I don't remember how they rounded or anything. I think they might have six forty one, six forty one point six. Tell you the truth, I'm having a little bit of difficulty determining where they want you to round things. But regardless, uh, that takes care of the question, and see if um, without looking at what SOA did, see if you can answer it using it uh, the other way. All right, uh, tell me what you think. Uh, thank you for subscribing and. Please comment on the video if you want me to cover this material in general. Thank you.